Yes, we do. All right. Well, we'll call the meeting of the Health and Human Services to order. Um, roll call, please. Each member is acknowledging that they are attending the meeting via Zoom and that they are located in Wayne County, Michigan, unless otherwise stated when I call your name. Commissioner Maraki. Here. Commissioner Dobb. Here. Commissioner Anderson. Here. Commissioner Colleen. Right here. Chair Baker McCormick. Here. You have a quorum present. Thank you. Next item, please. B, approval of the January 12th, 2021 meeting minutes. Do oh, I have a Okay, it's been moved. It, did right. I get support? Support, Anderson. It's been moved and supported. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion passed. Next item. Item, item C, old business, there is none. All right, we'll move along to the next item. Uh, and actually, if we can have the good Dr. Armami uh, report moved to the top of the uh, item. Agenda. The agenda, thank you. We have an update from Dr. Mahana Hamami regarding COVID-19. Good afternoon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good to be back updating the committee on uh, our vaccine efforts. Uh, Mahana Hamami, uh, Wayne County uh, Chief Health Strategist. Um, uh, I, I wanted to give you a little bit of the numbers as far as where we are uh, of, of yesterday and also touch a little bit, Madam Chair, on an item that you requested about uh, the side effects. Um, so as uh, I was listening to the conversation before the meeting was, was uh, launched or started, uh, there was this discussion about uh, doses requested versus doses received. Um, we did have uh, several conversations with the uh, vaccine director at uh, the state. And um, last week, uh, they were they informed us that they are putting together some uh, method that would provide more equitable distribution across Wayne County. They are using several factors in the formula that certainly would take into consideration population. It also takes into consideration the uh, uh, population that are 65 and older, the population of essential workers, as well as some uh, social and economic factors or what we call the, the social vulnerability index. Uh, with that in mind, um, they are moving from uh, every week requesting doses to allocating doses. So we are no longer able to go and allocate and request how many doses we want except for second dose. As far as the first dose allocation or request, it is now allocated. We know by Friday of every week how much we're getting on Monday the next week. Um, we uh, certainly emphasize that we do have a big population and we also would score high on the social vulnerability index as well. Um, so we're going to see how that translates into what is going to be our fixed amount. Um, one encouraging thing, regardless of what the total number is going to be, is that we are going to be promised the same amount going forward. So that would help us in planning. Um, so that means if we uh, are going to get 5,000 a week, then we are going to get 5,000 a week. Again, 5,000 a week isn't enough for us to, to uh, match the demand that we have, but at least we know that we can plan accordingly and going so forth. So with that, uh, we did receive a new shipment um, this Monday, uh, yesterday, and that shipment in total uh, was uh, 1,950 doses of the Pfizer vaccine and 2,400 
of the Moderna vaccine. So it's close to 4,000 uh, doses. Um, uh, that brings the total amount of vaccine combined that we received since uh, December to 16,000 doses, 675, of which we have administered 13,994. We have uh, close to 3,000 second doses that are scheduled this week. And by Friday, we will have exhausted what we have in supply of both the Pfizer and the Moderna combined. We are expecting a second shipment on Monday. If um, they send us exactly the same amount that we received this week, that means we should expect close to 4,000. Um, however, when we also in a uh, prior conversation with the state, they said that number might be closer to 5,000. Um, we are in terms of the groups that we are addressing. We are still in priority three group. The lists that I mentioned to you, these are priority three are those that are considered health, essential healthcare. So all the practices, dentists, pharmacists, dialysis, people that go to homes and take care of patients, people that, and, and, and um, the categories are becoming wider and wider as we dig into that. That list in total as of today is 18,193 individuals that requested a dose. We have done so far 6,234. So we're not even at half of that list. We are also including the 1B group as the law enforcement. And law enforcement has generated some confusion of what falls into law enforcement. And some people are thinking that courts are under law enforcement. Um, uh, municipalities are under law enforcement. Law enforcement is specifically police. And when we talk about public safety, fire departments. Fire departments were all covered under the EMS, at least 95% of those were covered under EMS. When we did them first, we did close to um, uh, 1,148 of the EMS workers before the uh, last year, before, before the new year. As of law enforcement, we have a list of 1,232, of which we have done 827. We are including those in our plan going forward. Um, we have done 896 of the long-term care uh, uh, residents and staff. We are going back this week to do their second doses. Most of the EMSs that were vaccinated three weeks ago are getting their second doses this week as well. That brings us to the educators. As I mentioned previously on, on, on the last uh, time I was uh, in front of the committee, um, we worked with RISA to do a survey of how many teachers and staff in uh, Wayne County want the vaccine. That list was close to 20,000 individuals. Um, we uh, have worked with RISA in uh, finalizing how we want to address uh, which school goes first and which district goes next and all that. RISA has reached out to the school superintendents. They had a working group and they came up with a model where they want to divide the school districts into four regions. And this is based on population, based also on um, some socioeconomic uh, factors. And we will do the four regions together. So we will start with one school district of each region and move them as we move along. Um, of course, everything, how fast do we move through regions and how fast do we get to schools depends on how much vaccine we have. We are planning to start vaccinating teachers uh, by uh, uh, next week, definitely, but, but we're trying to make that sooner. With that, I want to uh, be extremely careful in what we disclose, especially in the public forums like this. When we say we are planning on uh, moving to one population, this is being uh, taken literally and we start seeing that population coming unannounced 
it creates chaos, it creates a lot of logistics, it creates some people that are not too pleased about being turned away. Um, any communication that is involving these targeted groups is going to come from whoever that authority that we're working on, uh, uh, working with to, to handle that. So if you are a teacher and you have not been informed by your school district or by your principal, then please do not show up demanding a vaccine. You will only be turned away, unfortunately. I saw uh, uh, Facebook uh, uh, ads that uh, some people are based, uh, posting that say, teachers go to Schoolcraft College, it's open from 8.30 to 3.30 and they're taking everybody. That is absolutely not true. And what you are doing is you're disrupting our process and you're putting a burden on our volunteers and our staff to instead vaccinating people, deal with people that are disappointed because they got misinformation. I do apologize if this sounds a little bit direct and harsh, but um, our staff that are doing their best to accommodate every uh, uh, resident in, in that, that is eligible to get it should not be dealing with the logistics of people that are jumping the line or people that are taking things out of uh, misfactual or, or spreading uh, uh, mis non-facts about the process. Um, these are the numbers and this is our plan as we move along. As you can tell, um, we are chipping away, but the, the numbers are still, they speak volumes, no pun intended, about the enormous uh, population that we are dealing with. One last uh, thing is about the uh, seniors 65 and older. And we have tried to make that as clear as possible. And we have posted it in so many different channels. And I was on at least several uh, radio and, and TV and printed media outlets uh, trying to simplify this. Um, the, the simple truth is that Wayne County Health Department, so any location operated by Wayne County is not handling seniors 65 and older for all the reasons that we specified and, and discussed in the past. We don't have enough vaccines. We don't have the logistics of handling scheduling individuals. And we have an agreement with all our area health systems. And as Commissioner Colleen mentioned, Myers have been added as well. And there are some retail pharmacies that are uh, uh, assigned by the state. So anyone that shows, unfortunately, last Saturday, we had people that are brought by their families being pushed on wheelchairs and we had to turn them away. Again, this is not good for you guys and it's not good for us, but unfortunately it is what we are dealing with. So there are all the information on how seniors are going to get their doses is available on our website. We have repeatedly said that if you belong to a health system, then check with your health system because you are good. At. Now, you might check with your health system and tell you we cannot do it until a week or 10 days. They're dealing with the same thing that we're dealing, shortage of supply and a big volume. So going to your health system and being disappointed that they didn't give you an appointment tomorrow does not mean that you can come to the health department to get it because we are not gonna be able to meet that. Again, I do apologize if I am sounding a little bit um, uh, too direct, but I think the, the facts should be stated because of all the emails and the angry emails and some of the uh, uh, rumors that are circulating that uh, we are not doing what we are supposed to do. Um, I will stop here and, and, and close with one final thought that um, this is a very huge operation and a very complicated operation. And we have been doing this now by, by today, almost five or six weeks. And uh, mistakes are bound to happen. We're happy that the mistakes are done through the scheduling and, and maybe the, the way we are handling some of those that are coming for vaccines, rather than to have mistakes in how we are administering the vaccine, which we are doing a great job. Our nurses and our staff are extremely competent. They're working long hours. They are working in situations uh, such as when they're in the hab, freezing cold. Our, our volunteers and our staff are out in the snow uh, registering people, making sure that they are included and they are 
moved uh, seamlessly and without any incident. And I'm happy so far to announce that everybody has been so cooperative. Everybody has been extremely helpful. And except for very few that were uh, disappointed, which we understand why they were disappointed, um, everything is going well. Great, thank you for that um, update. Um, and uh, the question that I wanted to, uh, to see that you clarified today, I don't know, um, did you have any information on the side effects or yes, so, uh, any so, report on that? Yeah, thank you. Thank you uh, for that. Um, as, as we uh, said on several occasions, the side effects of this vaccine are not different from any side effects that a regular vaccine would uh, pose in terms of the way the vaccine is administered. So there is soreness at the injection site, some um, fatigue, uh, flu-like symptoms, um, maybe a high temperature for 24 hours, some chills, and that is what we're seeing in the majority. However, there has been the issue that has been raised about uh, allergic reactions and specifically what we call anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis uh, that is a scientific term for whenever someone has a severe allergic reaction. We're not talking about some rash or itching or a little bit of discomfort. We're talking about something that requires someone to seek medical care immediately because they are swelling or they're feeling shortness of breath or they, they might have a, a um, swollen airways that needs to be uh, addressed. Um, uh, so far, the CDC have published what we call the MMWR report, and, and that is circulated widely. They have published the uh, incidence of anaphylaxis using both vaccines. The Moderna vaccine has shown 10 cases of anaphylaxis, 10 cases of anaphylaxis from 4 million, 4 million doses administered. That translates into 2.5 cases per million. The um, Pfizer vaccine showed 21 cases, but it was uh, evaluated in a shorter period that was between December 12 to December 24. So that is from a pool of 1.8 million. And because you have a smaller sample, then that percentage is a little bit higher. As we get a, a bigger sample, that percentage is going to spread. The percentage is 11.1 .1 per million, which is still a low percentage. What does that mean? Let's go back to the Moderna, 2.5 per 1 million compared to the flu vaccine that everybody takes every year, which is 1.3 per million. That is not too much, that is expected. All the cases, those 21 cases of Pfizer and 10 cases of Moderna had a history of severe allergies before taking the vaccine. It didn't happen in people that did not have a history of allergy. All of these cases were treated by given epinephrine or the EpiPen, None of these cases, the 31 cases that are reported, none of those resulted in death. In fact, as of today, with more than 18 million in the US and about 60 million in the world, there has not been one death that is confirmed to be related to the vaccine. Some of the uh, effects that we are seeing or the side effects that we are seeing are more about anxiety more about fear. People are coming, they're too anxious, they're too excited, and they get the vaccine, and all of a sudden that sense of relief is causing them to experience some psychological issues that are translating into clinical issues. We are still observing everyone for 15 minutes. We, those that have allergies are being observed for 30 minutes. In the, two, in the cases that were reported by the CDC, any anaphylactic shock or any uh, reaction of anaphylaxis, uh, almost nine out of the 10 cases happened within the first 15 minutes and one happened after the half hour. Nothing happened later or a day or a couple of days later. Um, I, I hope this gives you some of the, the scope of what is reported so far. 
I still uh, uh, would say that um, we are not seeing, and there hasn't been any documentation that this vaccine is not as safe and, as any other vaccines that we are currently accustomed to. Now, do you know if any of those cases occurred in Wayne County? No, we, we uh, don't have any report of the uh, severe anaphylactic shocks in Wayne County. Okay, and um, are you saying that after the shot is administered that each person waits at least 15 minutes after each shot? Yes, yes, that is, okay. that is, that is a recommendation. Uh, we observe that um, regardless of where we are, whether we are at Schoolcraft or at the HAP building, we make sure that people are waiting 15 minutes, they are observed, they are asked to, those that are in drive through they are asked to honk their horn if they're feeling anything, and we immediately have someone that check on them. Great, great. Um, all right, thank you. Um, I'll go to the committee. Um, does anyone have any questions? Madam Chair? Go right ahead, uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Anderson. Anderson. Thank you. Uh, Doctor, uh, when other entities uh, are reportedly getting about 10,000 doses a week, uh, and, and I, it's been reported anyway that the city uh, is getting that, and the rest of Wayne County, of course, amount, there's greater population in the outside, outside of the city. Uh, is that, um, what was the determination on that? Because I know there, and, and I understand the city's having uh, issues now with uh, uh, supply uh, and are having to cancel some appointments, I think, uh, the last report that I heard. Uh, and then I, I know at, it was publicized that at the Suburban Showplace, they were doing like 10,000 doses. Uh, and so I, I know it's a constant battle to try to keep up with those reports. And some of them may be factual, some of them may be uh, totally wrong, uh, but the distribution to Wayne County and the, what you're receiving right now seems to be woefully uh, low uh, and, and it just based on population alone. And I know you said they've come up with a formula they, they're using that will determine the distribution of the vaccines here henceforth. Uh, so can you, can you speak to that a little bit more as to what those factors are they're going to use to determine the amount of vaccine that's going to be distributed to the entities around Michigan? Uh, and, uh, you know, are we going to actually gain? Uh, because if it's only 4,000, we're not, it's, it'll take us years <laughs> mm -hmm. to get everyone vaccinated. Yes, thank you, Commissioner. It's, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, so, so we wanted more details to, to understand the formula itself. Um, however, as, as I mentioned, the, the call that we had mentioned that what goes into consideration are um, essential, the, the population of 65 and older, the population of essential workers, and to some degree, the social and economic factors, um, which in my opinion, as, as a person who knows enough about Wayne County, I would say that Wayne County should be higher in those factors than other places. Um, uh, I don't know, to be honest with you, what is going to into consideration when they allocate to uh, the city or, or to Oakland County and all that, if, if this is the formula. Um, I, I do believe that they received more initially because they were factoring the health systems in, in uh, the city, uh, specifically uh, Henry Ford Hospital, and the others, and I think when we talk about um, getting 10,000 doses a day, it might be combined where it's not only the health department is getting that versus the whole uh, district or the whole city of Detroit. Um, we, we certainly, uh, again, hope that we will get more than 5,000. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. But at least on the bright side, we know if, we're, if this is what we're, we're getting, then this is what we have to do every week, rather than guessing as we did in the past. Okay. Uh, I, 
one thing, and I, and I, I didn't send you a thank you, I don't think, about uh, responding to my uh, email that I received from one of our funeral directors. Uh, do we know when that's going to, they're going to roll into the, uh, uh, to the... Uh, yes, uh, so, so as, I, as I mentioned in my response, we are uh, scheduling them as part of the priority group three because of the nature of, of their work. So, so they fit between priority three and one B. And, and as we are getting them, they are scheduled. Again, some are going to be scheduled later based on the uh, uh, samples we're getting. And this is going to delay. So unfortunately, again, if someone registers this week, that would not guarantee a spot for next week. It might take a couple of weeks until we get to that. As I mentioned, we have a list of 18,000 that we only done 6,000. So that is delaying things. And now if we want to chip into the 20,000 educators, then even that is gonna be slower because we're going to have percentages of how many doses we allocate to this group and how many doses we allocate to that group. And that means we are going to be even slower. So I, I again, I do understand the frustration and I understand that it's, it's going to be probably a safe assumption that when you register, no one is going to call you immediately and say, thank you for registering. We'd like to offer you an appointment. And probably it's going to take several days, if not more, to, for someone to respond. And, and this is unfortunately what we're dealing with. We're trying to get through that. We have uh, taken a lot of our staff and put them into the scheduling process in terms of answering emails and answering calls. And we even changed their job description just to handle these volumes of calls that we're getting. Okay, and and the um, uh, as far as the uh, doses, uh, once again, the only one you're do ones that you're doing at the Van Born Health Center uh, is for the second dose, and also for those that are still in the initial group, the first responders, and that that you have not been able to get yet. And then um, you're going to school. It, it, yeah, to, to, to some degree, yes. What we are doing is that we wanted to keep the two vaccines separate. So the Van Born location is going to be strictly a Pfizer vaccine and Schoolcraft as of so far is going to be strictly a Moderna vaccine. Um, with the, uh, that means with the second dose of most of the Pfizer's that, that were vaccinated in December, now it's their turn for second doses. And we're talking now about uh, volumes of 900 a day and 1,000 a day. So that is going to be strictly at the hub for second dose. If we get more Pfizer, then we are starting, we will start to schedule some people at the hub for their first dose as well. As for the Moderna, we are still in first dose phase. We won't get into that until 28 days later, and that is going to be where the second doses are going to be. And how will those that got the first dose, uh, the Pfizer, uh, how will they be notified or do they have to just call? Uh, will there be some notification? Uh, there, there is notification. So everybody that goes through either site are given a card with when their next dose is. There is uh, some communication via email as well to remind them of their dose and they just show up. Okay. <clears throat> they wait in the line uh, that, that's there with everybody. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Dobb. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Dr. Hamami, thank you so much for advocating with the state for more vaccines. Um, you know, I've had a lot of questions from constituents as to if we are communicating with the governor, with the, with the state health department to get more. So thank you for, for doing that and for clarifying that. Um, also, I, I'm hoping that moving to the allocation, the weekly allocation, rather than just requesting and, and hoping we get a certain amount will um, allow us to or, or will help with the, the rescheduling of appointments problems that we've had. Do you think that will, will help now that we can expect a certain amount every week? We can, then we know how many appointments we can, we can make. Um, <laughs> let, let me be careful in how I respond to that. Uh, theoretically, yes. But when we have, let's say we scheduled a thousand today and 1500 showed up 
and they are all eligible and we don't want to disappoint anybody, then we might come to Friday where we're out of vaccine. And the only reason we are canceling is when we do not have vaccine. So, so again, it, it is a, hopefully we won't get into that because we plan better. But again, when we have more than what is scheduled, we have to be flexible in what to do. Okay, thank you. And also thank you for um, urging patients. I think that's just the message that we need to get out to everyone is just, you know, it's, it's easy to, to get angry and to be anxious and everyone wants their shot. Everyone wants to be immune to this, this virus, but it is going to take some time. It's going to take weeks. It's going to take months. It might take a full year for everyone to get vaccinated. Um, we all need to just be patient and wait for our turn. There will be enough for everyone. Um, let's just all kind of, you know, let's, let's be patient. Um, so I did have, I've got two other questions. Um, the uh, daycare workers, are they in uh, phase 1B? Um, so uh, under the education, it includes uh, teachers and staff that work in schools. It also includes the uh, child daycare and, and those that are also considered part of schools. Okay, yes. so, so private day, daycare workers would yes. be um, 1B? Yes. Okay, thank you. And then um, finally, can you talk a little bit about these different strains that we're seeing? Um, I know that there's been a couple of the, the UK strain that has shown up in Moshnaw County, and now I think there was even one case in Wayne County. Um, uh, yes, actually, we have four cases in, oh. in Wayne County. And um, again, as I mentioned uh, last time uh, we spoke, um, it is quite expected for the virus to go through the evolution process, what we call mutation. Um, when it starts uh, changing the composition or the structure of the virus and some of the, the characteristics of the virus, this is where these become uh, very concerning. Currently, those uh, variants that uh, have been exposed, uh, th th there has been at least 100 variants, but those specific four variants uh, based on their geographic location, they're adding to the transmissibility of the virus. That means it will spread faster, which again is, is a big reason why we are still emphasizing the uh, precautionary measures as in masking and physical distancing, as well as stricting, strictly quarantining and isolation, as well as testing frequently. So um, the ones that we have seen in, in Wayne County are, uh, and Carol can correct me if I'm wrong, the H1B something, and that is the, the one that makes it uh, faster to spread. Um, we have immediately done the um, case investigation on those four individuals as reported to us by the state. We have, uh, are strictly uh, um, enforcing the quarantine and advising them to go into isolation. We are also following on their close contacts and making sure that they are also quarantined. Um, again, uh, simple measures such as quarantine, isolation, Again, masking, distancing, and regular hygiene is going to limit the spread of any of the viruses, whether it's the original or the variants. What does that mean? Which is probably the next question that people are gonna ask, how is the vaccine going to affect those variants? Again, so far, according to all the uh, uh, investigation that has been done by researchers and the CDC, it doesn't seem that these variants are going to escape the immunity that is provided by the vaccine. It might alter it a little bit, but it is still at the threshold where it will prevent a severe infection. So the vaccine is still as effective towards those variants as it is to the original virus. Okay, wonderful. Um... I think that is all that I had. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hamami. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Job. 
Uh, I believe uh, Commissioner Kathleen was next. See your hand. Go right sure. ahead. I'll Vice take Chair. Turn that. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, welcome back, Dr. Hamami. So good to see you. Uh, I'm going to start this with a statement, Doc, and I don't uh, in any way uh, expect your response to this, but every hospital system and every health department in the state of Michigan is ringing the phones off the hook in Lansing saying, we need more vaccine. We're all in this same boat together. Everybody's lobbying for more because there simply isn't enough. Um, uh, I wanna discuss uh, communications for a second here, uh, Dr. Hamami. Uh, as has been um, discussed here, the uh, frustration that people have, and if you don't mind, just as an example, at one o'clock today, 102 to be exact, I got another email. We're all getting them as commissioners. We're getting them on our Facebook. We're getting them sent to us. I'm sure the department is the same. <clears throat> this gentleman says, I doubt that I will get an answer. Yeah, there we go. Start out with that from you, but I hope I do. My wife and I are both over 65. We both have compromised medical conditions. There's no way to sign up or talk or even get on any list. Wayne County website says they're currently not giving vaccines to group 1B. Ascension has no phone number and they deny any knowledge about the vaccine. Beaumont number says no info and hangs up. Seriously, other counties are doing a much better job. We feel hopeless. And, and that story is out there too. And I hear that a lot that somehow Oakland County and Macomb County are doing a bang up job. Uh, I know they're in the same boat that we are. Uh, because uh, Executive Hackle out in Macomb has been very public here in the last week, 10 days. We're ready to do 50,000 a day. Send us the vaccine. They have the same thing. So in communication, this is what I'm suggesting, Doc. We, uh, th there's so many moving parts here, and, and it's confusing to the public. And, and I'm looking at a couple of fact sheets that maybe we should be putting out. Uh, one fact sheet should be uh, what are the phases that we're dealing with right now? You, you kind of gave that to us in your PowerPoint the last time, right? And how many uh, people are in each phase, right? And then, and then we can compare that to the number of vaccines that we have. Uh, but I think that's one thing because uh, the phases are confusing and people really don't want to hear about the phases. They just want to know, when am I getting a vaccine? But I think a fact sheet that says these are the phases this is how many the Wayne County Health Department is responsible for. Uh, and to separate that from the hospitals, because that's another thing that's getting clouded out there. When people see that Oakland County's doing some event at a hospital, they think that's Oakland County's uh, vaccines. No, it's the hospital's vaccines. Um, so, uh, and, and that will be another fact sheet I could see, Dr. Hamami. What are the county responsibilities versus what are the hospital responsibilities? Um, and so people have a better understanding of that, right? We keep saying verbally, the hospital systems are saying, you know, we're gonna take anyone, uh, 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 you know, over 65 and all that sort of stuff. And that's a third one, I think, uh, Dr. Hamami, just a fact sheet. If you're over 65 in the county and we can use this to email to people, we can use this in social media, hopefully to clarify things. If you're over 65 in Wayne County, this is what you have to do in a quick fact sheet. And then if something changes on that, then we change the fact sheet, right? But we use that until, and I know you got a top-notch communications guy in the department because you stole them from the mental health authority. So Mr. McGrath, if you're out there, I'm talking to you, baby. Uh, but I can see we, we need a little bit more of that. Uh, uh, and I don't know how we address for people in Wayne County that there's the Detroit Health Department and the Wayne County Health Department and uh, kind of in this case, never the twain shall meet because they all have their own responsibility. But I think a fact sheet, if you're over 65 in Wayne County, this is what you have to do, boom, right? Can you call, can you you know get on Walgreens list? Can you get on CBS's list? Can you get on Myers list? How do you do it? And then list in the major hospital system. Because I can't believe in this email, Ascension, and other hospital systems are saying, we don't know what you're talking about. So there is a communication issue there. Uh, I think also a separate sheet on phases, 
just to give an idea to people, right? We have to follow what's coming down from the CDC, you know, down from the state of Michigan. So what are the phases? Where are we at? Um, and then a little idea of the responsibilities of the county versus the responsibilities of the hospital systems. So that's just for future feedback. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about the variants with you, uh, Dr. Hamami, uh, a little biology here. Uh, you mentioned that there's 100 variants out there right now. Well, what I call them mutated, uh, but in the public out there, it's the variants. Uh, we're going to see another couple of hundred of these variances over the next few months. This is certainly not the last of them. Um, so it's what viruses do. They mutate. You get all these variants. Uh, and uh, so that's another thing I think people should just realize, you know, uh, and not to get too excited because the media loves to be, you know, oh, my God, a variant has showed up in Ann Arbor. Uh, these variants, these variants, and tell me if I'm wrong, Doc, are going to go worldwide, right? Once they're out there and the way this stuff is transmitted, you know, it's just like, you know, uh, they're going to be here. It's not like we can throw something around the state lines of Michigan and prevent them from coming in. As long as people are moving, the variants are going to move. Where, where are we at with testing, though, Doc? And what are you suggesting right now? How is the county equipped for testing? And what should we be doing as citizens about testing? Uh, that, that's a great point, Commissioner. Thank you very much for bringing that. Um, the best way of finding out uh, new cases, and specifically as we are looking at new variants, is to continue to emphasize testing. I think there was some uh, relaxation on behalf of uh, some of uh, the people where they thought, oh, the vaccine is here, so uh, let's not do as much or focus on testing. Testing is as important as ever. The county has an abundance of testing sites. We have spent an enormous amount of uh, the CARES uh, money on, on testing. I think on the agenda for you today yeah. that there are, there are those testing. We have yeah, at least- more money today, yes, correct. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we have at least nine sites all across Wayne County that, are, um, that, that have the full capacity to perform tests that they are not performing just because people are not uh, uh, going for testing. So anyone that needs a test will no longer it's not like the early days of the pandemic where, where testing was very scarce and very rare. Um, you have any, uh, all, all the sites are on our website. They are geographically accessible. It doesn't take long. It's less than 10 minutes and you can get a test anywhere in the county. So I emphasize the need for that. And to uh, add to your probably initial point, I, I completely echo what you said. We are all in the same boat, including the state as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I'm disclosing any information that people do not know, but we are informed or we have been informed at least as of last week with the call that we had with the state that the Michigan allocation of both the Moderna and Pfizer vaccine on a weekly basis does not exceed 120,000 doses. And that 120,000 doses should go towards all the state. So imagine if Wayne County alone, the demand is 60,000. That is half of what the state is getting. So we completely understand why this distribution is lagging. Yeah, and, and maybe that's another, uh, we'll put Mr. McGrath to work some more. Uh, maybe that's another good one page fact sheet. Testing is still important. And this is why, and this is where you can go in Wayne County. So people see it on Facebook, we can email it to folks. Uh, and again, it's the KISS method, right? Keep it simple, stupid. And uh, uh, because the public is very uh, confused as to what's going on. And in something this important, then everybody lashes out uh, because they're not. So straightforward, simple information is the best. And I also see, in the chat today that a county employee has put in, what about employees of the county that aren't considered first responders but are still working with the public that work for Wayne County? Should our employees know at this point where they stand in terms of getting a vaccine? 
Yes, absolutely. Just to, to cover the, the point of the uh, simple fact sheets, we do have a, a FAQ, a Frequently Asked Questions document that is on our website that addresses all that you yeah. mentioned. Uh, I will make sure that Michael um, can forward it. We are working also on translating it to Spanish, Arabic, and Bengali as well. Um, this is updated frequently in what phase and how to get it, and it has all the lists. So, so that that is done. As far as the comment yeah. that that has been uh, uh, asked in the chat, and uh, this is what, uh, as you know, we have a, a COVID uh, oversight uh, group that meets every uh, Friday that in, includes everybody, all departments in Wayne County and all different uh, entities. Um, as far as of now, um, all of our Wayne County employees that are considered part of governmental entities. And these are in group 1B, but they are not in the three priority groups that have been moved. These are buried a little bit down uh, there. Um, when we talk about public safety, these are the only ones if they are county employees are, are going to be moved. So when, when we talk about um, uh, the sheriff deputies that are in jail, this is part of what the governor has mentioned as correctional staff. And, and these are the ones in JDF and in jail and all that. And we have started doing those as well. So this is where we're looking at our own operation. How does it match the priority of the public and trying to make sure that everything is happening in accordance? Yeah. And I, I don't know, you know, to send out to all employees, uh, this is who we're doing now, right? <laughs> and just like the general public, these are the folks that are going to have to wait, right? This is what people are wanting to hear. And, and I'll tell you, Doc, I've looked at those FAQs. I'm going to go back and look at that uh, in terms of the fact sheet. Uh, uh, and I'll give you some feedback on that, right? Sure. Because Absolutely. those of us that run for public office, right, and what we have to all fit on a little postcard and distill it down to communicate uh, the essentials to the public, uh, again, you know, as few ambiguities as possible and as little reading as possible. Uh, because the more they read, the more questions. And I think we're all that way. So again, Doc, boy, you got a job, man. I don't envy you at all. Um, so thank you uh, for the job you're doing. And thank you for coming today. Look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Colleen. All right. Um, Commissioner uh, Marecki, you had a question. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you, Doctor, for the update. And thank you for your candor because we, we just need to know like straight up what's going on. Um, so I have a couple questions just to clarify. We're not doing the seniors in Wayne County over 65. They have to go to their, um, to their health system. If they don't have a health system then, are, is Walgreens and Meyer are they doing only people over 65? Yes. Yes, so, okay. so just, just to clarify, at some point, um, our health systems also said that even if you're not our patient, and specifically Beaumont Health, if you're not our patient, then you can still register, get a MyChart ID, and we'll accommodate that. I know this has been uh, unofficially put on hold because of the supply that they are having, but that is going to change if they get more supply. But we, again, we know and we have been informed by the state that Meyer has been added with specifically the focus on 65 and older. We had a phone call with Myers, and uh, they have uh, several locations. One is addressing Wayne County residents. However, for sensitive and, and reasonable issues, they don't want to disclose those locations. They are doing everything online. So there is a link that is provided. I believe it is also uh, on our website. If not, it should be on our website. And how can people go into Myers' website and request an appointment? And again, requesting an appointment does not guarantee you tomorrow appointment. It will, however, put you in queue. Right, and, and Commissioner Dobb is right on. I mean, the, the patience is the key to this. Uh, the emails I'm getting are like amazing that you know everybody wants it tomorrow. Um, okay, but this brings me to my next question. Mm -hmm. We have the limited amount of the vaccine and people are waiting in line. And like you said, you may get 500 more people than we're, 
were scheduled to come, but are we then angering the people at the end of the week that do have an appointment and then we have no vaccine to give them? Um, probably, to be honest with you. However, um, and I think uh, it was uh, Commissioner Dobb that asked me, we started using the honor system. So we do not ask for anything but, you know, a couple of questions to ensure that you should be there and you are supposed to be there. Other places, they're asking for pay stub and two uh, IDs and, and a letter from, from someone and all that. We started with using the honor system. We do not have the time to police everyone and to check their IDs. We're dealing with, again, huge numbers. Sometimes we're out in the snow. That it's, it's not something that we can do. So at some point, we are deciding that, yes, I am a healthcare worker, but I wasn't scheduled to be today. And that person has been in his or her car for at least an hour. Would it be easier to say, go ahead, or no, go back and come back tomorrow? So these are some of the judgment calls that we have to do on the spot. And it might be okay, it might not be okay. It might add to what is happening towards the end, but these, this is what we have to, to, to handle and on a literally in, in real time, what we need to do. We are trying to minimize accepting anyone that is not supposed to be there i.e. it is not your group. But if you still fit within this group and you're not on the list, and, and this list isn't per individuals, this list is per businesses. So if I'm Hamami Pediatrics, for example, and 10 people showed up and they said we're from Hamami Pediatrics, then our volunteers do not have the ability to say, well, half of you should have come tomorrow or half of you should have come today and which half and which other half. So this is where some of those um, loops in the system are, are being exposed. We're trying to tighten those gaps as much as we can, but still it's going to be based on the trust issue and the honor system. I think this is going to change a little bit as we're dealing with the schools because Technically, everyone that work in a school should have some sort of an identification that says uh, Canton Public Schools or Livonia Public Schools or whatever. So this probably would streamline this a little bit better. Okay, so if, if um, let's say on Friday, people, there's not enough vaccine, are those people notified if they have an appointment or if their group's supposed to come in that they will yes. be delayed? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So, so they don't show up and there's nothing there. Yes. No, no. It's, it's being done individually via email. It's being done by press releases that, would, that we put out. Unfortunately, some are not still getting either way and they might show up. Very few might show up and find that the clinic is closed. Okay. Um, just an, one more question. Um, I, this is all anecdotal, I, I don't know, but I have heard that different hospital systems, their employees, they're not getting the number of employees um, willing to receive the vaccine, that the numbers have gone pretty low in some areas. And I know there's a time limitation on these vaccines that you have to use the vaccines before they go bad. Are we getting any of the leftovers or are they, do you think they're still they have enough to do the 65 and over and they're still using, nothing's going to waste. I guess that's my question. Is anything going to waste? Because Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, absolutely not. In fact, I would love if there are any spare out there that, that people can get. We, we know from our weekly calls with the health systems, we also communicate that everybody is going to the last drop, literally, of, of their supplies. Okay. And then just one last question. Who... Do you know who will be notifying the teachers? Is it their superintendent that does it? If, if, they, if this is a quadrant type thing, um, just so we can tell people, because I heard on social media this weekend that um, people were urging teachers to go to Schoolcraft and saying that they were special ed teachers because the special ed teachers were getting the vaccines first. So who, who, are, who was supposed to notify them? Their school district, their superintendent? 
Yes, so so uh, we, as, as I mentioned, we are working closely with RISA and all the superintendents. There will be an announcement that is general. There will be probably a two or three pages of this is how we're doing this. These are the regions. This is how we prioritize it. And then teachers are going to be notified by their school district and most likely their school principal because the superintendent is going to say school Stevenson and Holmes and and whatever, this is your turn, you can go between these hours, and this is how we expect them. We don't know uh, that teacher A and teacher B are coming. We only know that these are the blocks, and we are going to see whether teachers from Stevenson and Holmes are coming today or tomorrow or whatever. Um, let me touch on, on the special ed issue. This was a another challenge that we had to deal with on uh, Saturday specifically. And it was uh, half misunderstanding and half probably miscommunication where things got out of control. We did receive a list of 500 teachers and these are not special ed teachers. These are called teachers that deal with medically fragile students. These are teachers that have to change a feeding tube or, or check on a tracheal pipe or sometimes change diapers and things for, for students that have medical conditions. Immediately when I looked at this list, that puts them in priority group three, similar to any healthcare worker that is uh, handling that. And we said, these are the ones that we will allow. The rumor spread that go and tell them you're a special ed and they're allowing everybody. And this is what we had to deal with on Saturday. Okay, and just one last question. I know there's been some miscommunication to some of the municipalities um, in the last few days. When do you expect municipality workers to um, have, the, have the ability to get the vaccine? Yeah, municipality workers that are not in uh, public safety, i.e. law enforcement and fire departments are still part of Group 1B, but they become government entities similar to our county employees and anybody else. And these are way down the list. They are not yet there. Okay. Okay. I'm sure that that will be cleared up of what happened this week. But okay. Thank you. Thank you for the update. It's very helpful. We take this information and send it to the people that are emailing us every day. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Marecki. Um, and just a couple of follow-up um, points uh, about the fact sheet that Commissioner Colleen mentioned. Um, I think uh, that, that that's an excellent idea. Um, and on, I believe on Fridays, we get the update of testing, of not testing, but of, uh, of the number of fatalities and the number of cases of COVID, maybe uh, in the same way that you send out those updates. And I'm not sure if it's your department or if that's um, uh, through Carol or I'm not sure who sends those out, but I think if we could get something like that on on Fridays to to give us an indication of where we stand so we can let um, our constituents know uh, that you know so many people have been tested, we have this many um, uh, uh, vaccines that we have available. Uh, these are going to be increased at, you know, once we're hoping that, that we, we will all, all of the counties will get more vaccines. But um, I'm thinking that, that there should be more ongoing communication and you probably wouldn't have us um, <laughs> uh, grilling you every other Tuesday uh, if we had that information coming out on an ongoing basis. I, I agree, Madam Chair, and I'll, I'll pass it to our communication uh, leaders and uh, certainly we can have something uh, that we can add. Great, that would be excellent. Um, also, is there any information that you have in reference to 
those people that have already had COVID and are experiencing um, complications from COVID? Uh, are there recommendations out there what they can do or if there's any, um, I don't know, research uh, of any new, um, uh, any, in, any of new drugs or treatments for, for those that have had COVID? Um, so if I believe if I understand your question, Madam Chair, you're asking about those that have an active COVID-19 infection and they are experiencing symptoms. And uh, of course, these would vary in the severity of the symptoms. We know that uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, we were seeing more severe cases, specifically in the uh, uh, adult population or the senior population because of the nature of some of the underlying conditions that they had. We also know that since then there has been so many treatments that have proven to be effective and they minimize the need for uh, be put on a ventilator and reduce the need for um, intensive care and all that. Of these treatments, we know remdesivir was, was one. There were others, including some supportive uh, therapies, uh, the use of uh, uh, azithromycin and some of the corticosteroids as well. So the, the treatment protocols uh, that have been proven to be effective and uh, produced results are exactly what is being done whenever someone is needing that level of clinical care. We do know that there are others that are uh, either uh, testing positive, but they're asymptomatic where there is no need to intervene at all. We know that others are getting it in a very mild uh, form, especially those that are uh, the youth and, and, and younger. And at that point, supportive therapy is most of what is being uh, uh, recommended. So I hope this is what, what you meant by, by uh, your, your question. Well, I answered that. Yes, and, and I think I really was looking at the supportive, you said supportive services. Right. Uh, whereas you've already had it, but you still have the uh, leftover symptoms or some other complications that were left behind. Like, for instance, they say you know, take more vitamin D uh, or vitamin C. Uh, that, that's kind of what I've been hearing. Okay. And I'm just trying to see if there's anything that you know of on your radar that we can actually put out to the public to say, well, why don't you try, you know, this remedy or... or right. Yeah. So, so those, those are people that recovered, but they're not fully out of it, I guess. Right. Um, I, of course, any, any like logical uh, thing, whether it is this disease or this infection or any other infection is, you know, to rest, eat well, have fluids, um, um, get vitamins, uh, practice uh, some healthy habits. Uh, however, I hate to generalize and say, uh, zinc or selenium or any of that because it truly is on an individual case. So something might work for someone, something might not be good for another. So my recommendation is that at some point you have uh, seen your primary care physician or your treating physician and the best advice you can get on what to do after recovery and how to maintain your road towards full recovery should be from your physician because he or she know everything about you rather than to make those generalized statements. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Uh, Commissioner Colleen, did you have yeah. another question? Yeah, yeah Madam Chair, mm -hmm. thank you very much. I wanted to return to communications, Dr. Hamami. Um, I was just looking at a strand uh, on Facebook that was put up 14 hours ago asking whether Wayne County will distribute the vaccine the same way Macomb and Oakland do. And then they have some not so nice things to say about Wayne County. And in the last 14 hours, that has drawn about 80 to 90 comments. So I'm back on communication and I heard directly from your communication guy in the chat. Uh, to get to those FAQs on the county website, um, 
you got to go to the county website. Then you got to click on the COVID page and then you hunt around and there's a button somewhere that says FAQs, uh, but it doesn't really say, you know, and you hit the FAQ and what does it do? Brings up a 10 page document. So what I'm suggesting, and nobody's going to go through the 10 pages or very few. So what I'm suggesting is going back to, and I did give a couple of categories. I don't know if they're right. Let's make it into bite-sized pieces that we can easily share around uh, for clarity. Get rid of all the relatively unnecessary stuff. Just bring it right down to you as a citizen. What Here's the categories. What categories are you in? This is what you have to do. Uh, so I just wanted to re-emphasize that, Doc. I really don't have a question for you. Uh, but then I also have to say, both in PDF and in social media format, right. so we can email it to people as well as uh, putting it up on social media. So thank you, Madam Chair. I'm well, up. thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. We'll uh, work with uh, communication, and I'll get Mike and I to, to see how we can make sure that this is addressed. But thank you for bringing us. Uh, I will email Mike Chair. myself, too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hamami, um, for your time and all of your the, the work uh, that you're doing. I know it's a um, taxing job, um, but it's a very, very important one that, um, you know, so many of our constituents in Wayne County um, are facing the issue of, you know, this is a life or death issue for, for a lot of people. So um, we, again, thank you. And, and we hope to see, uh, again, some fact sheet and a, a reoccurring um, communication from, from the department so we, we know what, what's happening. And My hopefully pleasure. if we can do anything to advocate for more, um, uh, vaccines. I'm, I'm not sure uh, if we're, you know, if, if as a county we can reach out to maybe the, you know, Congress uh, woman, uh, well, my Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib or uh, Lawrence to, to help move this because, you know, you, you said we only had 1,900 um, of the Pfizer and 2,400 that, I mean, that it does, that doesn't even make sense. And for the state, uh, only a hundred thousand, um, we, we should do better. We, we have to do better. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate the opportunity that, uh, we come and share that with you. I know that you are also, uh, some of the outlets that people seek answers from, and I'm happy to provide you with whatever, uh, information that you need. I have to say as well that uh, this is truly a team effort. I am so proud of the team that we are working with, our health officer, Carol Osterberry, all our nurses, our volunteers, our emergency preparedness, and everybody that is supporting this effort uh, from um, the uh, executive office all the way down. And I'm happy that uh, you uh, and, and our commissioners are also uh, supporting this effort. And um, there is light at the end of the tunnel. It might be a little uh, small and faint, but uh, the more we go forward, this is going to be brighter and we will get out of the tunnel soon. Thank you again for um, uh, coming to speak with us today. And I just see, uh, see you, Carol. Did you have yeah. a comment? Go. And actually, yes. I mean, I echo everything I've Ms. been Austin asked. Barry. Oh, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Carol Osbury, health officer. Thank you so much. And, you know, it's, I, you, I can't tell you how many emails I have gotten from um, people, you know, who are like, wow, you were so organized. That was so easy. Even today, um, my sister sent me a text from her dentist who said, we came through. It was great. The, Wayne County is the only place where you are actually following up on the schedules and emailing the calling. So I do know that, you know, it, it's a it's a big issue, all of us, Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, City of Detroit, you know, all my counterparts, we are all 
really working hard to get vaccine into arms as quickly as possible to all of the priority groups. And I just wanted to also share that, you know, we do, we have, you know, gotten just so many kudos for, you know, getting this going the day after we got the vaccine, we were putting vaccine in, in you know, people's arms. So it has been, you know, certainly a team effort and we have been gearing it up and, you know, we are going to, you know, continue just tirelessly, you know, for our community, for our residents, um, you know, because we feel as impassioned about, you know, fighting this disease as everyone else. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do as well. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, were there any other questions before we move on, commissioners? No other questions? All right. We will move to the next item on the agenda or back to the first item. Item D1 and a new business, communication from the finance director forwarding report on the amount of medical insurance reimbursement collected comparing the results from fiscal years 2017, 2018, 2018, 2019, and 2019, 20. Do I have any questions on this report? Uh, do yes, I have Madam a Chair. Sorry, mm -hmm. Madam Chair. Yes. Colleen, I was scrambling around for my uh, mute button. Go right um, ahead. I would like uh, to be reminded, you know, uh, you know, the report kind of consisted of uh, printing off some pages out of our, uh, you know, out of the out of the books. Um, and uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to be reminded from the department why the commission has asked for this report on uh, medical insurance reimbursement uh, in the first place and what that is telling us when we get this report. Uh, this is Kamal Keparu, finance, di finance director for the Department of Health, Human and Veteran Services. Um, because I was with the commission for so many years, I, the, that comes from the budget instruction. So actually the commission and the fiscal agency basically get those requests from the commissioners. So the reason why I will have to yield back to, I guess, Mark Abo on the reason why it's requested, that's, that's one. Uh, what did that, that's, does that answer your question? Well, well, kind of. Medical insurance recent reimbursement. Well, what are we being, what what is, we being reimbursed for? Thank you. That's, that is for clients that either come to public health or the FQHC and they have their own insurance, right? For, like Medicaid. So if they go to the um, public health, they, you know, and we provide them with the service, they get reimbursed. Well, we get reimbursed on their behalf. Right. So for public health, you see, that's a small amount. For the FQAC, the amount is a little larger. Now, I must say, for the uh, ju juvenile for the juvenile assessment center, that's a larger amount, but that is a grant that we get from DWIN. So it's encounter based. So right. that's mainly the difference. So the first two, public health and the FQAC, is basically third party billing we get from somebody else. The last one is a is a grant that we get from the authority. Well, I'm sorry, D win. Yeah. Yeah, because especially for the FQHCs, uh, uh, for my colleagues, um, to make the FQHCs really go, uh, you need a client, a certain percentage of your client base that already has uh, insurance and can get reimbursed. Um, and that helps make the FQHCs more fiscally sound because of that reimbursement and it does cut the cost to the county. So those medical reimbursement numbers uh, are very important because they tell us uh, what costs in this area are being picked up by insurance and what cost still has to be borne uh, by the county. Am I correct, Mr. Keparu? Yes, and I wanna add a little more, and if Dr. Mommy is still on, he can correct me if I'm off base, but our FQHC is a little, a little unique because of the location. Right. When you look at FQHCs across the nation, basically the mix is 
um, medical, you know, we collect money and then it's the grant. Typical FC, FQACs across the nation collect more third party billing and the federal grant is lower. Whereas our FQHC in the area we're located, we are 70% grant funded and another 30% is, you know, the money we collect. Right. Now, the folks at the FQAC is working hard to kind of change that type of dynamic, but because of the population over there, we're just more grant dependent and they're working to basically flip yeah. that, those ratios. Well, and I think that's what I'm looking for. You know, with these budget instructions, uh, quite often the reports follow the letter of what's in the budget instructions. Uh, when there really needs to be a more fuller report. Maybe we should look at really what we're asking the department to report on. Because what our discussion right here, Mr. Caparu, has uh, added uh, enormously to what this report is and why it's important. Yes. So we, we might need to look, and hopefully Mr. Abbo, we, we, we might need to look at the format of these reports. Because uh, it is very difficult, you know, when you just print off uh, you know, what's in your books, it's hard to follow what that information is telling us. Um, and, and there's no explanation, and I'm not pointing fingers, but there's no explanation as to why we're getting this information and what the importance of it is. So maybe we got to look at how we ask you, sir, uh, for uh, uh, an annual report uh, and what the format is that we need for that. Uh, but thank you for the answers. Thank you, Madam Mr. Chair. Plain. This is Tom yeah. Coaches. This is Tom Coaches yeah. from the F2HC. Uh, I'd like to add to that uh, a little bit to your question. Can you hear me? I do, sir. I'm paying attention closely. All right. So the uh, as an example of what uh, Mr. Capuro was speaking about, the uh, FQHC, the Wayne County Health and Communities FQHC, collects commercial revenue, Medicaid revenue, and what I call self-pay revenue. Uh, our, our base is about 65% Medicaid. It's probably around 25% Medicare or Blue Cross Medicare. And the rest is self-pay. On the self-pays, we probably collect around five cents on the dollar bills. Mm. And, and all the other insurances, we probably collect anywhere from 45 to 55 cents on the dollar build. Our mm. total revenues overall outside the grant probably average a little over $600,000 a year. I hope that helps a little bit. I didn't mean to jump in, but I heard the discussion about yeah. great season. No, thank you. That, that uh, adds a little more perspective. And absolutely, you need more in your client base of people that walk in the door with insurance. Sure do. Yeah, okay, thank you. And also, um, I have no problem with talking with Mr. Abo to, to define, you know, what what yeah. the commission is looking for, because I do know that report has been that way for years. So I'm quite sure I need an upgrade. Yeah, yeah. I, I've raised this before. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good, good, good afternoon. This is uh, Dr. Dugokinski. Uh, also, just wanting to add in the jail component, you may see that at the bottom of the report. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that we've uh, provided to this body um, through the uh, department for a, a number of years. And to your question, Commissioner Clean, as to why that's important, um, you know, at one point, uh, the state allowed uh, for those inmates in our jail that go off site for inpatient hospital care to have that cost be redirected to Medicaid. And we've been very diligent in doing that uh, such that uh, those costs do not hit the Wayne County General Fund, uh, but rather are picked up by Medicaid. And as you can see by that report uh, that's in front of you, uh, last year there were about $5.8 million worth of charges for that offsite inpatient care. And if we would have paid that out uh, through a third party administrator with a discount, uh, we would have paid, that is Wayne County, about $3.2 million. Uh, and essentially those are dollars by 
uh, having the providers bill Medicaid directly with our facilitation of that, that we have saved. So that's the, important of the uh, importance of the jail piece, if, if I might add that, and thank you for your indulgence. No, uh, and thank you, Doc, for reminding us of that, because I think that's one of the reasons we were getting this report in the first place. Right. There was a time when the state, when we were not allowed to bill, uh, when people left our facility to go to the hospitals, uh, we weren't able to bill Medicaid, Medicare for that. That had to come out of the county general fund, if I remember this correctly. But now the state is allowing us to uh, bill if they have insurance. And I know you've been signing people up for Medicaid, Medicare uh, in the jail to avoid that cost. But thank you for adding that, because that's part of the history of these uh, hospital costs and why we're getting this report. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's absolutely correct. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Colleen. All right, do we have a motion? Uh, I'll move. Um, is this a receiving file? Yeah. Uh, yes, this uh, is support. a receiving file. All right, um, it's been moved and supported. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion pass. Uh, next item, I believe the next two or three items are receive and file. We'll vote on all of them together. Oh. Um, oh. Oh, they're contracts, two, madam two, two, two through five. That is they're all receive, receive and file. file. Right, yep. so we'll, we'll vote on them all together, uh, but we'll discuss each item separately. Is that? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So number um, number two. Um, any uh, questions? Uh, discussion? Okay. Um, if there are none, I have a question for um, the. This is for testing, and we just discussed that there were, I believe, nine different sites uh, for COVID testing that were not being utilized. Is there a reimbursement uh, of some kind it, for, uh, for testing that we're not, or tests that we're not using, or uh, what does that look like? When the when they're not being used, the, the facilities. Hi, this is Carol Osterberry, health officer. And no, those nine sites are they are being used. You know, we have, um, you know, every week we receive reports on, you know, how many people have gone through, and you know, it's it's providing you know just many um, opportunities within our community for um, our residents, you know, community members to have good access, easy access to these sites for um, COVID testing. No, they are being used. Absolutely. Okay, I, I, maybe I mis misunderstood, misunderstood uh, Dr. Uh, Hamami when he said that testing kind of fell by the wayside and, oh. and not as many people were being tested. Right, no. I think, you know, what his comments were more about, I think just maybe that general public almost perception, ooh, now we've got the vaccine, we don't need to, um, you know, get tested anymore. And that is not the case. So, but no, these sites are open. They are, like I say, um, well used. And, you know, we will, again, just be continuing with our communication out. And they are all listed on our website, you know, for, they, they've, they've proven to be very, very successful, actually. Great, great. Yeah, that was okay, nice. thank you for clarifying that. You're welcome. Uh, any other questions on uh, item number two? All right, um, uh, number three. Commissioner Anderson had his hand raised for oh. us too. Okay. Oh. Madam Go Chair, right ahead. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I, I just to be sure we're all on the same page, I believe two, three, four, and five all have to have individual votes. Uh, they're all contracts. They're not. Uh, okay, because number two says it's receiving filed. Are they 
Does they're all it? they're all receiving file because they were emergency procurements, so they're all receiving file. Oh, they are. Okay. okay. I don't see it on mine uh, on the agenda itself. I... Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Glenn, there. read the first two lines. Yeah, it's there, Glenn. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, folks. Sorry. I yeah. I was looking at the body of it more than I was those first two lines. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No problem. No problem. Did you have any questions on nope, two? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. With it. Yeah. Any any questions from in, uh, any other members? All right. Then uh, we'll move to item three. Any questions? Um, no questions. All right, number four. That's good. Okay. And then uh, we'll move to number five. Any questions? All these have to do with testing and COVID um, related items. Any questions? All right. Um, uh, Madam oh, Chair. Did, did you have a question? Go right ahead. Well, I was going to make a, I was going to make a motion to uh, receive and file and forward these to the full board uh, items, what these four or five items. Uh, but I also want to uh, ask commission council. Uh, we have, we are using the emergency procurement provision in our procurement ordinance a lot here. And I would, and council has reminded us of this, but I would like a memo from council that reiterates what the uh, uh, what the procurement ordinance says about emergency procurements and what is the latitude uh, that the administration has here you know can they just keep adding to these is there a threshold at which we have to vote on it a dollar threshold uh, so I would like from Commission Council a little memo to update all commissioners on these procurement ordinances and what the are on these uh, emergency procurements and what the rules are around that. Uh, but I will move, what is it, item one through five? Two, two through five. five. Two through five, I'll, that's right. I'll move items two through five for receiving filing and forwarding to the commission. Support. So it's been moved and supported. Uh, any discussion on the motion? If none, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Uh, one opposed? Did you did you say, uh, no, Commissioner I'm, Anderson? It was just a late aye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So it's been moved and supported, and it looks like there's no opposition. Motion passed. Next item. E, such other matters as may be properly submitted before the committee. I don't believe there's any other items unless uh, any of the other commissioners, do you have any other additional items? Nope. Next item, please. Public comments. All right, if you can unmute everyone and we will take public comments. Do we have any? One from the public that would like to speak to the commission. Anyone that would like to speak? Uh, any emails? No emails. All right. Thank you very much. And we'll move on to the next item. Adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Marecki. Support, Doug. Been moved and supported. Thank you very much. And we will see you next time.